This is a quick video guide to identification and orientation of the adult dentition. Here I've got some models of teeth oversized in front of me that are both the upper arch here and the lower arch opened out together. So we're looking at the patient's right hand side. This is their lower right and this is their upper right but laid out on the table so we can see. I'm going to take you through the orientation of the teeth one by one and give you the identifying features of each tooth. So if given the tooth in isolation, you stand a chance of identifying which one it is and which way round it goes. Before we start, I'll just clarify some terms in the description of the teeth. I'm going to refer to the teeth by number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, but also by name. So 1 and 2 of the upper and lower arches are incisors, the 3s are the canines, the 4s and 5s are premolars, and the 6, 7 and 8 are molars. The direction of the teeth in the mouth, we refer to the terms as buckle, which is the cheek side, and if I take a tooth out of the arch, we can explain this. So if it's on the cheek side of the mouth, it's the buccal. If it's on the inner side, which is palatal, or on the lower lingual, because it's next to the tongue, the front, or towards the front of the head, is the mesial, so that's this side, and towards the back, or towards the back of the head, is distal. So let's first look at the anterior teeth. And the anterior teeth are described as the teeth of the incisors and the canines, so from here forwards. Let's identify the anterior teeth. We'll look at the upper incisors first. So here they are in isolation, and you can see that they, the one and the two, or the incisor and the lateral incisor, are both fairly similar in shape. And in fact, in, in isolation, it's hard to tell without a size relative one to the other which one might be which. To orientate the teeth, the simple thing to look for is the mesial corner, and that is usually sharper on the upper incisors. So let's just identify this on both teeth. So on the main incisor, this is the sharper corner, this one's more rounded. On the lateral, this is the sharper corner, leading to a more rounded surface. And a good uh, comparison is your feet. If you look at your shoes, the sharper surface is usually on the inside, and it's the same in the mouth. So if you're looking at a incisor like this, look for the sharper surface here. You can also look for the cingulum cusps here to make sure that you're not accidentally looking at a canine. Let's put them back in the arch and compare to the lower incisors. The lower incisor is a little bit trickier because they vary, they're not both the same shape. The lower one does follow the rule of the upper in that it has a sharper mesial corner here and a rounded distal corner here. But the two does not. And in fact, its identifying shape is it's more fan shape compared to the asymmetrical shape of the one. So if you're looking at a lower incisor and it's quite even and fan-shaped, it's probably a 2. If you're looking at it and you can see some asymmetry that relates to a squarer mesial edge, um, it's probably a 1. You can look at the teeth from the occlusal to look at the twist in the occlusal surface in order to help you orientate them into the arch a little better as well. Moving on to the canines, and I take them both from the arch for comparison, they are relatively easy to identify orientation-wise and also whether they're upper or lower. The upper canine is quite a wide tooth in this case, and the lower canine is much more slender. If you have them to compare, it's quite an easy distinction to make. Orientation is also relatively simple if the canines are not heavily worn. Look for the shorter surface from the point to be the mesial. So in this case, the mesial surface of the tooth here, to put it into the upper right arch, and this is the shorter side from the point, puts it here. For the lower, it's exactly the same rule. Look for the shorter surface, and then the point, and then the longer distal surface allows you to orientate it into the arch. A final distinction, distinguishing feature is there's no cingulum. As the palatal or lingual side of the canine is often used as a ramp for teeth in canine guidance in occlusion, there would be no cusp here, otherwise you'd get a rather nasty bump as you moved your teeth. We now move on to the upper premolars, and if I pull them out, you'll notice that on quick examination they look extremely similar. 
The identifying feature of an upper premolar over a lower is that the cusp sizes are relatively similar between the buccal and the palatal. So if I turn the teeth, you will see they are fairly even. The lowers, the buccal is much larger than the linguals you'll see in a minute. In order to identify the four from the five, look for the canine fossa, which is this groove here, which I can emphasize against the background. This is so that it can fit tightly in with the canine, like this. The canine fossa means hole for the canine. So let's place these back in the arch and show you the lowers. The lower premolars, in comparison, vary in shape and are easy to identify once you have them identified as lowers. So the four is canine shaped as you classically can accept from the, the uppers, but the difference in cusp sizes is quite pronounced. Here we go. For the lower five, you may think that the tooth has three cusps, one, two, three, but it's bifurcated by this groove here in order to make it look like it has three cusps. So um, it's very easy to identify a lower five because if you think it's got three cusps, you're probably holding a lower five. The disparity between the cusps makes it very difficult to not identify the buckle as that will be larger. Replacing these and moving now on to the molars. Now the upper molars, um, when looked at together, do look to be fairly similar in shape, although you'll see that there's a graduation in size, that the six is larger than the seven, which is larger than the eight. In isolation, it's a bit hard to identify six to seven usually, um, but there are some features. So let's pull the six out and identify it on its own. It has four cusps, as do all upper molars. One, two, three, four. In this case, there is a little cusp here called the cusp of Carabelli, but don't rely on that as it's not on all upper molars. Not everybody has it. When it does occur, it always occurs on the mesial palatal cusp. For identification and orientation of the tooth, what to aim for is this cusp here. Have a look at this one, the distal palatal cusp. It's the one that looks like it's hanging on the back and not part of the main tooth. And if you orientate it, so that is the distal palatal of the tooth, so you can say, right, in my arch, how I'm going to rotate this? Well, let's put it distally, and then let's put it palatally. That means the tooth must go this way round, and it should fit into the arch. So if you've got a cusp of Carabelli, you've almost certainly got a six in your hand. If not, you'll have to go on size. And also, the tooth tends to be a bit squarer than the seven, because it has a slightly larger um, shape. Yeah. Moving on to the seven, same as the six, four cusp again, one, two, three, four. And again, the distal palatal cusp seems to be hanging on the back. So orientate the tooth with that there, distal palatally, and you'll be okay. For the eight, sometimes morph morphology-wise, anything can go because things get a bit squashed back here. But again, it's got four cusps, although they're a little harder to identify. One, two, three, and again, this cusp here, which almost looks like a feature of one of the others, but that's it. In order to orientate it, again, try and put the distal palatal cusp in its place, um, but you might find that it's a little bit harder. Um, if you have the roots of the tooth, it's, it's much more easy to identify as the roots are often quite heavily curved distally, so it makes identification of the tooth much easier. So let's put those back in the arch and look at the lower molars, as distinguishing between those is even more difficult. Let's bring them up. And you can see, on first glance, they look quite similar, but we will notice straight away that the lower six, apart from being the largest tooth in area in the mouth, also is the only one with five cusps. One, two, three, four, five. If you orientate the teeth so that the fatter, wider end is mesially, and the three cusps are buckly, you've got it round the right way. So put the three cusps buckly, and make sure that the thicker end of the tooth is towards the mesial, and you're okay. There is another trick as well, which is to turn the tooth over, and you can see that it has quite a pronounced cant, with the buccal being quite bulbous, and the lingual being a straighter side. Now the reason that the, you've got this straighter side here is when you put the teeth all together, you get a groove, which is where the tongue sits, like this. So my hand is now the tongue, and you can see how it works. If I have the tooth around the wrong way, um, you can't use that feature, and it looks wrong. So make sure that the tongue can fit into that groove and you've probably got 
that lower molar around the right way. The seven and the eight are both four cusp teeth, but they are very different to the upper molars in the fact that the four cusps are very evenly distributed, almost like a cross uh, or a current bun um, uh, when you look at the tooth in form. One, two, three, four, and here, one, two, three, four. If I turn the teeth so that we're looking distally, you can see the cant in both teeth so that the tongue space is here, so that allows us to orientate them. But distinguishing between the seven and the eight is very difficult, and you will need to rely on looking at the relative size difference, because the eight will be smaller, or looking for the squeeze in the tooth to be more pronounced. So if there's the trickiest teeth to orientate in the mouth, it's probably these two together, if you're given them in this form. So hopefully that is a short overview to identifying and orientating the teeth in the adult dentition.